Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today it's my wrap up for September and my TBR for October. I'm going to talk about what I read in September and what I'm reading in October for the Trick or Treatathon. I did this last year. This is a really, really fun readathon where you basically just pick prompts and you make a bingo board and it's so much fun. I'm going to talk about it more in depth when I get to that part. First, I'm going to go through what I read in September and let you know what my favorite book of the month was. So I'm going to go through these in the order of how much I enjoyed them. None of these books I gave, I think, less than four stars. So they're all good books. It's just this is the subjective part of being a book reviewer. Which book was my favorite? <laughs> so uh, we start with Devils Kills Devils. This was a kind of horror action. I just found um, it kind of meandered a bit and I wasn't super into like the concept once it was kind of fleshed out wasn't super into the characters i thought the writing was really cool like when it was actually like pared down um yeah the cover is also really neat <laughs> next was the ravening uh this one same kind of thing um i found that it had like a repeated kind of section that wasn't needed it had a trope that i wasn't super into i liked the characters i liked the concept i just found like the other one it kind of meandered a bit <laughs> uh metal from heaven same kind of thing for this one it was more like I didn't really like the style I found that uh it was had way too many sentence fragments it was too choppy for me the characters were just like so like over the top which was fun but also I was kind of like this book is like raising my blood pressure uh but it was really fascinating world building I really loved the idea behind it the action scenes were like really cool and like very like very gritty. I, I really liked it. I just, uh, yeah, there was just like the style thing kind of like held me back from loving it. The Fenris device. This was a really good classic sci-fi. I actually enjoy this more than the other ones because it was kind of like light and fun and uh, had some like interesting little kind of things to it and the writing was lovely. I just, I really liked this one. The Terraformers. I liked this a lot. <laughs> I know not a lot of people really liked it, but uh, yeah, uh, you can go back and listen to the live show. I am filming this actually before the live show because I have to post it on the Monday and I have to film it before. Anyway, you don't need to know my life story. Uh, but at the time of filming, I liked it a lot. Maybe Steph will have changed my mind. You can go back and check. <laughs> Uh, Widow Fantasies. This was a collection of short stories. It's Canadian and um, it was lovely. I, I really liked it. It was poignant. It was interesting. Uh, it was relatable. The stories had really cool twists at the end or really cool messages that were like important. Um, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, Clever Girl. This book was so much fun. Uh, it was kind of a feminist like take on Jurassic Park. Uh, I thought it needed more of an overarching kind of argument, but I loved everything else about it. <laughs> it was so good. If you love kind of political theory and you love Jurassic Park, you should totally check it out. And then the last one that I read, which was the first one that I read, which is also the favorite of mine, is Where I End. This is that horror novella with a bunch of weird stuff in it about the island. I, I just dropped something. I, uh, I, I love this book. I loved it. I want to buy it. Uh, it's so, it's so weird <laughs> and just like creepy and atmospheric. And yeah, I really loved it. Uh, yes. And also, um, because I can't start reading any of the re trick or treatathon books until the 30th, I am currently reading a book I will be reviewing later in the week and it is called Dragon Kings of Oklahoma. Uh, this book is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you can catch my review of it um, in a few days. I also wanted to point out a book that I did not read, but I'm affiliated with the author and uh, it is Don't Eat the Pie. If you love horror, if you love like gothic mystery, if you love witches and cults and mother-daughter stories, this book is so cool. Look at the cover. It's so beautiful. Um, yeah, so this book came out on the 24th and it's just a really fun horror book. It has a bunch of rave reviews from like Megan Collins and... Uh, you know, Emma E. Murray and a whole bunch of people just like loved it. So I highly recommend checking it out. Um, you can get it wherever books are sold, I guess. So the trick or treatathon. So how it works is that there's different teams. I'm on team fall and you basically are competing for points and you get points by completing like little missions and stuff on the discord, but also by reading books and completing your bingo board. So everyone has to create their bingo board ahead of time. You get the prompts ahead of time. So you can just select what numbers you want to put on your board based on what prompts you think you're going to complete. So I went through and I picked some books that applied to the prompts. I kind of 
hoped that a lot of the ones I had on NetGalley are apply to the prompt. <laughs> I'm really hoping to do. And each team also gets a trick or a treat based on their team. And that's how you kind of pick what team you want to be on is kind of, at least I picked it based on kind of how the trick and treat worked because I think I could actually accomplish these. So I'm going to go through my TBR based on these prompts. And we'll tell you what the prompts are because I'm not, I'm going to forget when I actually review the books to even talk about this. So I'm going to do it now and then I'll do a wrap up. Um, at, in my wrap up of October, I'll talk about what prompts I got and everything. So I'm going to start with my trick, which you have to read first, which is a book publishing in November or a book that's mostly orange. Um, that's paired with the prompt, which is read a book under 250 pages, which is Mountain Crown. Uh, this is a book about dragons. It's a novella. <laughs> and I'm going to be reviewing that. I mean, I'm basically going to start reading it on the 30th because it's a novella. I planned it this way so I can like do a review quickly because <laughs> I can read a novella in like one evening. Uh, the next one I'm going to read is Satellite Image. Uh, the prompt for this is a book published in October. Satellite Image is a book coming out in October. So that's perfect. I have an ARC copy of it. Um, oh, I have it right here. So it is a Canadian book. It's a domestic suspense. Uh, the next one is a book set in a country outside the one that I live in. That's easy because I think Canada, a lot of the books I read take place in the United States. <laughs> and the book I'm reading is called Blue Light Hours. This is, I think, a story about a young woman away at university and she's, it's like her time there and, and the conversation she has with her mother back home in somewhere in Latin America. <laughs> I can't remember which country exactly. It might be Brazil. Uh, yeah, so... Um, that sounds really interesting. I, I, I requested that because it was also kind of a novella. I kind of think when I was requesting these, I did have the trick or treat thought in my mind because uh, there's a lot of novellas. There's another novella I'm going to be reading, which has um, the prompt of witches or a magic system. This is a fantasy. It has a magic system. It's called And the Sky Bled. I have no idea what it's about. I, I remember reading the blurb being like, does it have magic? Yes, mentions magic. <laughs> now I can't remember anything else. Yeah. Uh, next is a non-removable sticker. Oh, here it is. And that is because I won an Instagram um, competition to get The Bloodless Prince by Charlotte Bond. This is the follow-up to the Unbroken Blade or something. What the heck was it called? The one with the dragon on it. I read it back in April. You think I'd remember the title, but I don't. Um, I'll put it up here. Uh, yeah, the sequel to that. And it does have a little sticker at the top saying it's an arc. So that counts as an unremovable sticker. I will say people complain about these stickers and I get it. They suck. But if you're a small press, uh, they, it is very expensive to put actual stickers on books, especially if you're printing, you know, like small presses somewhere like aim to sell like 3000 copies, 3000 copies. is like dollar 50 to print, say a dollar 50 to print per book plus shipping costs. Plus then you have to pay to have someone put the sticker on. You have to pay for the sticker. It's too expensive. Um, bigger publishers, you know, they can do it. Do they choose to do it? Probably not because it's expensive. So that's why they're on there. I know they suck, but that's the reason why if anyone was curious as to why books now are coming out with these kind of like, uh, unremovable stickers. It's because it's cheaper than putting a, a real sticker on it. Also, it's better for the environment. Just saying. Uh, the next one is called Do You Want to Play a Game? And it's about, because I put half of the list here. I, did, I didn't put the actual title of the prompt. I just put what the prompt was because I'm not organized, really. Um, and the book I'm doing for this, because it has to do with some kind of like a competition, is Andre Norton's Year of the Unicorns. So this is my uh, old school science fiction book. I got this book at a used bookstore. And yeah, it's about a, um, to pay an unearthly tribute, 13 must leave with the were riders. 13 torn from their homeland to ride with illusion and darkness, blah, blah, blah. So it's a competition story. So there we go. The next is basically a monster romance. And I'm finally going to get around to this one called Strange Love. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> I've been wanting to an excuse to read this book for a long time. Uh, yeah, I'll let you know how that goes. I have a couple more. Uh, there's one called To Be Continued, which is, you know, finish off a series and uh, or part of a series. And I have gotten a copy of Absolution, which is like a prequel to the Annihilation books, the Southern Reach trilogy. I loved Annihilation. I really liked that whole trilogy. So I'm so excited to have gotten that. Uh, that comes out, I think, at the end of October. So I kind of have to squeeze that one in there. But um, yeah, the next one is a book of like found footage, uh, apparently. So different kinds of media. There's a book called Not, what is it called? I have, I only wrote on my little, I have a little chart here. So I'm not doing these by memory. Um, called Not Even River. It's not called that. What's it called? Not, 
even the river flows or something. Anyway, it's up here. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. I just remember when I looked at the blurbs for these prompts, it said that it had a mix of like poetry and a mix of like newspaper clippings and stuff. So that seems to fit this prompt. The next one is a horror. Obviously, I'm going to be reading a horror for Halloween and it will be The Luminous Dead. Luckily, that pairs with the Interstellar Book Club because it, we're reading this, you know, sci-fi horror for the book club. So I'm like, yay, there's my horror. <laughs> and lastly is my treat. And that is a book I started before October 1st. And this is an, also an audiobook. And this is The Strange. Uh, this book is, I'm really liking it. It's like a sci-fi take on, iron, on True Grit. Uh, if you remember that book slash movie, uh, it's really fun. I'm really enjoying it. So I don't know if I'll actually end up reviewing it in October. I might review it in November because I have a lot here and it's not just reading the books. I also have to review them and then I have to record all this stuff. So we'll see if I have time. We'll see if I even get to all of these. I'm obviously going to be reading all of the, uh, the arcs. Uh, so I guess that's pretty much everything. Yeah. I'm going to get through all of this somehow. Uh, yeah. So, uh, let me know if you're also doing the trick or treat a -thon. Uh, let me know. I'll follow your channels. I want to see kind of your progress too. And yeah, check out that don't eat the pie book. It's really, really cool. So thanks. <laughs>